So if we run that again, boss room. So it updates the doors, updates the boss room. So, so this tutorial is going to go over a bug fix that I accidentally created from the last video as well as, I guess, generally fixing up and optimizing some of the game. So let's get right into it. So the first thing that we're going to look at is our dungeon generator code. So right now this loads a boss room at this specific location, okay, within this list, um, so long as the room is not null, okay? Uh, we don't actually want this because we're gonna spawn a boss room slightly differently which is uh, gonna make it so then we'll be able to spawn the boss room all the time as previously there could be times so where the boss room isn't spawned so the only thing we want to do in here is actually load the room up so load an empty room up and this is just gonna simply uh, I guess give us a basis for our dungeon. Now, what we're saying here is once we've registered the individual room, then we want to remove the doors from that room. But we're not going to be able to foresee the rooms that are going to be loaded in the future. So it's going to remove doors that may be uh, wanting to be connected to other rooms in the future. So we can get rid of that. Now, what I'm firstly going to do is I'm going to create a couple of new bool variables. Now, one is going to be called uh, spawned boss room. Okay, I'm going to set that equal to false. Okay, and the other one is going to be called uh, updated room. Okay. Cool. When our load room queue count is zero, so if we don't have anything in the room, what I'm firstly going to do is I'm going to say if we haven't spawned a boss room, okay, then we shall spawn a boss room, which is actually going to start a co-routine and I'm going to call it spawn boss room, okay, so spawn boss room. And if we just go straight, whoop, actually fix that up. There we go. So if we go down here and we go to, we create an IE numerator, okay? And it's gonna be called spawn boss room. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna check whether our load room queue is still at zero after a certain amount of time, because it could be zero here but it could have not just updated the next room. So if we check after, let's say, half a second, so yield, return, new, wait for seconds. Okay, 0.5F, so half a second. And if our load room queue dot count is still equal to zero then, well, then we're not actually um, spawning rooms anymore. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna firstly uh, just before we go into the if statement, I'm going to set spawned boss room equal to true. And this is going to make it so we only call this once because we don't want to be uh, spawning multiple boss rooms or looping through this the second um, for every frame. So I'm actually going to create a couple of uh, rooms. And the first one is going to be called the boss room. And similarly to what we did before, set our loaded rooms. We can set our boss room to our uh, loaded room dot count minus one. So this is going to be our so our final room that is spawned. Okay. Now I'm also going to have a temporary room, so I'm going to call it temp room, and I'm just going to make this equal to a new room. Okay. And inside. We're just going to grab the boss room's x value and the boss room's y value. Now, this is going to error because we haven't actually made an override method for our room. So if we go into our room and just under where we've spawned these variables, 
we can create a public room. Okay, and we can take in an integer x and an integer y. Okay, and we can set our x value equal to this x value and our y value equal to the y value. Awesome. So now this will be fine. The next thing we want to do is actually destroy our boss room. Okay, because this is going to actually be a blank empty room that we've just created. So we can destroy the boss room. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the room to remove within our loaded rooms. So to do that, I'm going to actually, I'm going to make use of up the top, I'm going to be using system.link okay? And this will allow us to make use of um, singular items within a list, okay? So I can go var uh, room to remove. I'm going to set that equal to loaded rooms dot single. And we can set our lambda expression. So our R value is going to be R dot X, okay? And we're going to make sure that the X value is equal to temp room dot X as well as our y value equaling to our temp room dot y. Okay. Now, once we've done that, we can actually remove the room from the list. Okay. So we're going to remove room to remove. There we go. And finally, we're going to load our boss room. So end. And we want to load it at temp room.x and temp room.y. Awesome. So once we've done that, up here we want to check well if we have spawned a boss room. Okay, so if there's nothing in the queue, we have spawned a boss room, but we haven't updated our rooms. Okay. Then we want to update our rooms. So else if uh, not spawned boss room and we have updated rooms then I want to actually grab each room so we can just go for each room I'm going to call it room in uh, loaded rooms okay then I'm going to go room dot remove unconnected doors sweet and then I can set our updated rooms equal to true. Now, and I want to make sure that this is a not updated rooms. Okay. Just like that. Cool. So the final thing I want to do is update the room because this will go ahead and update all of our doors except the boss room store because this was only beginning to be loaded at this point which is right here so if we actually go into our room um, we can create a ball so I'm going to call it private ball uh, updated doors okay I'm going to set that equal to false um, I guess just under the start so we can create an update function okay Oops. So we can create an update function. I'm totally terrible at typing. And we can check whether the name of this object contains an end room. So if we are a boss room. And we haven't updated our doors as a boss room. Then we want to update our doors. We want to remove our unconnected doors. And then we can set our updated doors to true. There we go. So if we head on back and we run this, so it should spawn all of our rooms. That's cool. Then it's gone ahead and it's updated our boss room, but it hasn't updated these. I actually mixed these up because I set this one to uh, updated rooms when I should have set it to not. And I need to actually set this to uh, spawned boss room. Okay, so if we go back 
and we have a look now. So what it's done is it's spawned all of our rooms, okay? And then it's updated the boss room and the doors that connect, and then it's updated these doors. So if we run that again, awesome. So updates the doors, updates the boss room. So we actually have two doors here, uh, two here. So all of the doors should be spawned perfectly and there should be no issues with that at all. So awesome, we've got a boss room over here. So yeah, so I guess this is the uh, official end to the uh, procedural dungeon generation tutorial. Now, I guess from here, I'll just go through, I guess, some other stuff within Binding of Isaac, but uh, there may be potential for future tutorial series in the near future, depending on how things go. Okay, but um, as always, if you guys liked the video, leave a like. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Um, this a bug was actually pointed out to me by a uh, YouTube comments, so always feel free to give me feedback, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time.